What's up everybody, I'm Jason and welcome back to some more tips and tricks for the Canon EOS R5C. So this is another video in what's starting to feel like a never ending series of videos talking about the audio functionality on the EOS R5C. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the remaining pages in the audio setup menu or pages two and three of the audio setup menu. So these cover your microphone input controls and your calibration and output routing options, as well as one setting that's not in the audio setup up menu, which is your MP4 audio format selection. So before we get off into talking about the settings in the menus, let's quickly reorient ourselves with the way the camera handles the audio setup menus. So Unlike the EOS R5, where you literally only had five settings dealing with audio that you had to be concerned about, the R5C has an entire menu section for it. Four pages, in fact. Now, the first two pages deal with input linking and levels. I've already done a video on how to deal with these settings or how to use these settings, so I'll put a card to that up here, which you can go back and reference at your leisure. Page three, which is where we're starting this video, deals with your microphone, multifunction shoe, and built-in mic configuration options. So attenuation, low cut filters, that sort of thing. Finally, page four deals with the calibration and output routing options available on the camera. So we're gonna start this off by looking at page three of the audio setup menu, which has our input control settings. Now there's six settings on this page and they're basically divided up. You have two settings that deal with the microphone input on the side of the camera. You have three settings that deal with the multifunction shoes audio input, or more specifically the Canon DME1D microphone when it is in the multifunction shoe. And then finally, you have one setting that deals with the built in microphone. So, starting at the top of the page, we have the two settings that deal with the microphone input. Now, I should note if you're used to something like the R5 where turning things on just affect everything, on the R5C, all of these settings are very much compartmentalized to the thing that they affect. So, turning on the mic attenuator here will only affect the microphone input. It doesn't affect the built in mic and it doesn't affect the multifunction shoe. So the first setting we have is the microphone attenuator. This is pretty standard and straightforward. It applies 20 decibels of attenuation when you turn it on with the default setting being off. Now 20 decibels of attenuation is not a tremendous amount of attenuation. This is really gonna be only good for taking a really hot microphone signal or a situation where you're recording in a very loud environment and bringing that down to something that's more manageable from the camera. Now the second option here relating to the microphone input is the microphone low cut filter. And this one's gonna take a little bit time to talk about because the manual and Canon do a very poor job of completely fleshing out the details here. So the simple thing is, is obviously this applies a low cut filter to the microphone input terminal. Easy. The question is what exactly is going on? So we have three settings here off LC1 and LC2. Now off is the default and off is pretty obvious and easy to understand. So this turns off the low cut filter. So that brings me to the first of the low cut filter settings, LC1. Now the manual simply says this is for recording mainly people's voices and that's all. In practice, what this is, is a low cut filter that's optimized for removing AC hum or AC noise from the environment that you're working in. I had to do some testing to figure out what actually was going on with this. My testing indicates that the cutoff frequency for this is at about 150 hertz, and the roll off is about six decibels per octave. So that's pretty standard for this kind of low pass filter. The cutoff frequency does not go up high enough to actually impact the bottom end of most people's uh, vocal range. The second low cut filter setting is LC2. Put simply, this is a wind filter. Now, low cut wind filters are not phenomenal at retaining detail in people's voices. And they typically, because of the frequency of the rumble from wind, have to have a cutoff frequency that's high enough that they actually do start impacting your vocal sound quality. So based on my testing, the cutoff frequency for this filter is at 260 Hertz. The roll off like LC1 is also six decibels per octave. 
Now, when it comes to dealing with wind noise in your recordings, uh, quite honestly, the best way to go about doing it is to block the wind from getting to the camera in the first place. Barring that, the next step that you're gonna wanna take is to put a foam wind filter or windshield on your microphone. On top of that, you probably will want to put a fuzzy wind, uh, wind filter, like uh, a dead cat, as they're often called. And then barring that, you're gonna go all the way up to like a full on blimp with a fuzzy windshield over that it, to give you sort of the best quality before you want Want to start getting into using these filters. Now, I would say you're probably better off to do the noise reduction in post. However, if the wind noise is sufficiently loud, that can actually impede the ability to record or to, to uh, get clean recording of lower frequency sounds in your video or just all sounds if it just clips out completely. And that could be a problem of not having recoverable data. So, LC1 is generally going to be safe to use in most circumstances. LC2 you're going to want to leave only for those circumstances where you have really severe wind noise and you've already done everything you can to take care of it. And I would further say that if you are going to use LC2, test it in the situation that you're working in. Now the next three settings on the camera deal with the multifunction shoe and specifically the Canon DM E1D microphone when it is in the multifunction shoe. The start of these is the shoe mic attenuator setting and much like the microphone input setting, this applies 20 dBs of attenuation to your shoe mic. Uh, your options are off, which is the default and on and like the 20 dB mic input setting, this is really only gonna be useful if you need to bring down a really loud environment um, on that mic. The next shoe mic setting is the shoe mic low cut filter setting. And just like the microphone input, this applies a low cut filter for the external mic. Now the filter, as far as I can tell, is actually applied in the external mic. It's not being done in the camera. And unlike the microphone input, we only have two options here. So off is the default and on, based at least on the explanation that's given in the manual, is essentially a wind filter. So it's equivalent to the LC2 filter on the camera. Now the final microphone setting or shoe microphone setting is the directionality setting. And this is probably in some ways the neatest feature of the DME1D microphone is that you can control from the camera how directional it's going to be. Now you have three options here. You can have shotgun, so a mono center only, very directional, uh, polar pattern, essentially, 90 degree stereo, which is the default setting on the camera, and 120 degree stereo. Now, I'm not an audio recording engineer, and I, I don't do stereo work at all, essentially. So I am not gonna be an expert on this, but my understanding, the difference between 90 and 100 degrees, 120 degrees stereo has to do with the relative impact of what's in front of the camera or what's in the center of the stereo field to what is out at the periphery. So in a 90 degree stereo setup, their center will be relatively more impactful or relatively more prominent because the whole periphery of the sound stage is narrower. Now, both of these are still stereo. Things will move in the stereo imaging, but the general feel will be different. With 120 degrees, because it's a wire, wider stereo coverage, the relative balance of the center part of the uh, recording area will be somewhat diminished compared to the outer edges. Now the last setting here on page three of the audio setup menu is the monaural mic setting. Basically, this is the setting you choose to enable or disable to turn on or off the built-in microphone. The default is on, you can turn it off here. Now, if you don't see this setting on your R5C, it means you're running the default or the shipping firmware when the camera was first released. Yes, I know it's kind of amazing to believe or to understand that Canon actually shipped this camera without a way to turn off the built-in microphone. 
So if you don't see this, you need to upgrade to firmware 1.0.2.1 or newer. I would recommend going to the latest one because 1.0.4.1 has a lot of quality of life improvements, even in the audio system that are worth having. Now, one other thing to note with respect to this setting is when you disable the monaural mic, as with all of the other mics on the camera, the camera will not pair out the channels that it records. So in four channel mode, if the only camera or the only mic that the camera has available is the built-in monaural mic and you turn this off, the camera will still record four channel audio to your files. It will just be completely silent with no recoverable information in it. Now, this wouldn't normally be a big deal, and I'm not saying that it actually is a big deal, uh, but the thing to bear, bear in mind is because in four channel mode, you are recording uncompressed audio, the bandwidth that that uses will always be there. So the camera isn't smart enough to say, oh, hey, the uh, monaural mic's turned off, but the microphone's plugged into the mic input. So we will just record the mic input two channels and we will not record two extra channels in four channel mode. So with page three out of the way, we move on to page four and page four takes care of the output calibrate or the output routing and calibration settings. Starting at the top of page four, we have the one kilohertz test tone setting. Now, this takes a little bit of explaining. And for the most of us, or the vast majority of us, this is gonna be a setting that we aren't actually ever going to use. But we have four options to configure, or four choices in the option here. The default is to not have a test tone one or test tone enabled, so it's off. The other three are minus 12, minus 18, and minus 20 decibels, again, full scale in this case. So what this does when it's enabled is the camera will generate a one kilohertz test tone at the level that you've set it to whenever color bars are enabled and displayed on the camera. So the color bars are that test pattern that you know you frequently see. So the camera will only be able to display color bars when it is in one of the Rec. 709 color modes or gamma curves. So that would be Rec. 709 YDR normal or Rec. 709 standard. So this is completely not going to be available if you were shooting in, say, C-Log3 or HLG or perceptual quantization or any of the other, uh, well, those are the, the three HDR capable options. But that's what's going on with this one, even though most of us will never actually use it. So the next setting on this page is the headphone volume setting. Uh, this sets the headphone monitoring volume. Uh, I, I mean, it does, does what it says on the tin. You have 16 steps to switch, uh, select from, ranging from off to 15. So where a lot of amplifier manufacturers have made their dials go to 11, Canon has made the headphone volume go to 15. Now. This is the only place on the camera where you can change the headphone monitoring bar uh, volume, barring adding a custom function or custom function buttons, I should say, for this. Uh, there is nothing in the direct touch control interface that allows you to change this, which is a place where the R5C actually doesn't do as well as the R5, as the R5 always has the headphone volume available in the touch uh, quick control system. Now, if you do need quick control access or quick access to this, you can program two of the programmable buttons on the camera, one for headphone volume up and one for headphone volume down, or potentially you could just go to down and have to reset it the slow way. In any event, this is done through the assignable buttons menu, find the button you want uh, or buttons you want to program. The settings you're looking for are headphone plus and headphone minus. Now, all of the audio related buttons functions in the button customization menu are down towards the bottom of the list, so that's where you'll find these. Now, the next one is the monitor channels setting, and quite honestly, this one is maybe a bit more complicated than it really needs to be. So if you're used to a a uh, professional audio recorder, for example, say a Zoom F6 or F8 or something to that effect, you'll know uh, you'll know that there's an audio routing function somewhere in that 
camera. So you can output which channels are sent to which channels of the headphone or line out output. That's what this is doing on the R5C. The default is for channel one to be routed to your left headphone speaker and channel two to your right headphone speaker. Uh, but there is a whole slew of options here. Broadly, you have simple stereo mixes like the default. So you hear channel one and two as if they were a stereo pair. You have a mono mix option where the channel is duplicated to both ears and you can select one through four on that output. And then you have a somewhat complicated mix down where it does a stereo mix down to mono and then sends that to your headphone output to, to deal with that. My best recommendation here is if you want to play with the monitor channel setting because you want to monitor something other than channels one and two, which will be the highest quality audio input going into the camera to start with, then the best thing I can recommend is for you to go in and play with the setting and see which one works best for you. Now, if this is something you find that you change frequently, then there is a custom button function that is available to step through these settings. So again, assignable buttons menu, find the button you want to use. The function you're looking for is monitor channels. And like all the audio functions, it'll be towards the bottom of the button function list. Now, the last setting on page four of the audio setup menu is the HDMI output channels setting. So the camera will send audio over the HDMI port to whatever it's connected to, be it a TV, a monitor, a audio or a video recorder like the Tomos Ninja 5 or, or whatnot. Now, this one's really simple. They're, unlike the monitor channels, there's no mixing and matching and output roll, you know, controlling that's going on. You really only have two options here. Option one is to send channels one and two. Option two is to send channels three and four. The default is to send channels one and two, and that's pretty much it. Now, the final audio related function that I want to talk about in this video is the audio format selection that you have available to you when shooting in MP4 mode only. So when shooting MP4 files, you have a choice between whether you want to record uncompressed 16-bit, four-channel, 48 kilohertz audio, which is going to give you all of the channels and possible uh, sort of the best possible quality audio in this configuration. Or if you want to save space and store lossy compressed AAC audio that again will be 16 bit, but this will be time only two channels and 48 kilohertz. The default on the camera is for AAC compressed audio. The setting for this you will find on the recording media setup menu page one, all the way down at the bottom, it will say main audio format MP4. Now, if this setting is grayed out and unavailable, that means you are not currently set to record in MP4 format. So you're either in XF, AVC or RAW. Now, one thing that I want to point out here, which may be purely coincidental, it may have been something that older firmwares did, or it may just have been me not paying a complete amount of attention to everything I was doing. Uh, but I found prior to firmware version 1.0.4.1 that this setting would reset to AAC if I switched the camera out of MP4 mode into say XF, ABC or RAW, and then switched it back into MP4 mode. Now, maybe this was something up with my camera. Maybe I was doing something and I didn't notice it. Uh, this hasn't been a thing with the latest firmware, but my recommendation is gonna be if you do want your MP4 files to be LPCM, double check this setting every time you change or anytime you change the camera back into MP4 mode, at least until you're comfortable that it's not changing out from under you. So with that said, I'm gonna wrap this one up here. I've still got a couple more things to talk about with respect to audio on the R5C, specifically levels and monitoring and audio performance testing. Uh, but this video has already run long enough that I don't wanna drag it out anymore. So. I hope you found this useful. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button. If this kind of thing seems like it might be your kind of thing, please consider subscribing if you're not already. And as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.